Radio 1 online, www.bbc.co.uk slash Radio 1. It's from the album OK Computer, Radiohead's last album from 1997, that was no surprises tonight. In the next hour and a half, though, we can bring you tracks from the follow-up Kid A uh, with uh, our first batch of Radiohead tonight. So we welcome Ed, Colin and Tom to the studio. How did you get here? Uh, how did we get here? Um, by uh, a van. <laughs> in, a, in a hurry. In a hurry. In yeah. a hurry. You had to come across um, Harris because you've been somewhere else tonight doing TV. Yeah, we did a live TV show, which was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> We're still absolutely reeling nice. from it. Come down from it. They wanted to put. Yeah, they wanted to put us in an ambulance to come here tonight. So. Just to get, get the, beat the traffic, time. we might actually mm. need one after this. So yeah, I think so. <laughs> really? They, all day, they were suggesting they were suggesting getting an ambulance. Why? Because that's the only thing that will cut through the traffic here. I suppose. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's a carnage. So, how long have you been in France then? Now that that that's easy to answer. <laughs> well, uh, okay, it's, it's it's two days. It's two yeah, days. It's two days. Yeah. And who's the tourist in the band then? Johnny. Yeah. yeah. Johnny we all is. stay in the room, and Johnny goes out uh, with his map and that. Really? Gets lost. Actually, that, he never gets lost. That breaks the uh, international rules of uh, band stereotypes. Usually, it's the bassist. Oh, <laughs> God help us. I've <laughs> <laughs> got no mates in the band, so I have to go out and look for them. Yeah, okay, that's right. about right. All right, what we decided to do then, tonight we're going to play seven of the ten tracks from the album, as, at least as many as we can get through, in the order they appear, plus your honest answers, please, to a few questions we'll put to you, as and yours. You can email me, steve.lamac at bbc.co.uk. Uh, so we'll start with this, the opening track from Kid A, and this is Everything in Its Right Place. It's Everything in Its Right Place from the new Razorhead album, Kid A. When that track, I was, we were just saying while it was on, it's weird that the keyboard sound actually gives the song quite a lot of momentum. Mm -hmm. On that it's one. fat. It's fat. That's what like they it. say, isn't it? Fat. With the I'm learning the lingo. Yeah. yeah. Fat and whack. And it was it was a fat keyboard once used by or originally the same sort of keyboard was used on. Uh, <coughs> Japan. Japan. Japan right. They used to use it an awful lot to get all those wacky uh, sort of like well tin drum sounds. They were top band. Yeah, they were. They were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Haircuts. Let's not mention haircuts, shall we? No. Let's go, let's go back to it. So it's the start, it's the first track on the album, but also with the keyboard sound, it's almost, it sounded, um, when I first listened to it, like the pulse. It feels like a pulse of, like, the patient reawakening. <laughs> I'd say that's, that's, a, that's a very good analysis. That's probably about the best I've heard, actually, really. And is that, is that why it's there? Well, I mean, it was, it was actually, um, it was the patient awakening, because really we weren't getting anywhere. Um, and that was the first... I, th I think that was the first thing we did where everybody sat around going, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that, that's that's um, where we're heading yeah. somehow or other. I'm not quite sure how, but... So, come on then, how traumatic was it making the album compared to previous Radiohead LPs? I think it was more down to the fact that the, the traumatic bit was, was in a way, was, was um, having to go away and see it from the outside hmm. so you, like in a way we all had to get to the point where radiohead was was this, was this uh meaningless thing uh uh which we sort of didn't really hold uh, any faith in or you know it was just this thing that we'd been involved in hmm. um so you just have to break it up before putting it back together yeah or something. that's that's kind of what i was hmm. yeah that's what i kind of mean um because uh i mean for me personally it was like uh, I really, there wasn't really ever a time throughout the whole thing where I wanted to sort of pack it up because to me it's sort of like we'd spent so much time together and we were really close and we understood what we were doing. Um, we, were underst we understood each other sort of musically really. Um, so it was like it didn't make any sense to blow it out. But at the same time, everything that we'd done didn't seem to float my boats anymore <laughs> so um so you, you just lost the lost the i don't know the, the the drive or the reason i mean did you know what you wanted when you started when what, you started this? on this record yeah uh -uh, i'd say i'd no say plan. I'd, no i'd say this is the first time we didn't know what we mm. the hell we were doing <laughs> um and that i think that lasted for a good uh year and a half yeah I mean, everything in its right place was the first track that, as you said, that was finished, and it's like, yes, this makes sense. And that was six months in. To yeah. that was a, that was of June of last year, and we started. We went into the studio in. 
Paris. Here, yeah, yeah. In Paris. In January <laughs> last year. Yeah. Oh, yes, and we did. And so that's a lot of that tape a, under. <laughs> it was an awful lot of tape. There was an awful yeah. lot of tape that we got you that see, we need to recycle. I've been thinking about this, and because uh, have you never thought of maybe scrapping those first two sessions that you always scrap? No, and no, because <laughs> we used. No, the crazy yeah. thing. Th this is the stupid thing about it, right? I remember um, Chris, our manager, coming along. Um, while we were recording something or other and um, just sort of freaking out going wow that was that was really amazing and we all sat in there in the studio going <laughs> you know, but I think we basically had too much French cheese by that point <laughs> and uh, our brains were no longer working um, because we couldn't tell you know it was really weird so we took the tapes away and in, it, in retrospect it was it was like uh, hang on, that was really good, and that was really good. So, um, I think the problem was really that our state of mind was wrong. Right. I mean, yes, essentially, we shouldn't have been working. We should have been, uh, you know, I in the countryside somewhere enjoying uh, fresh air and, like, not thinking about right. it at all for, like, a good two years. But I think, really, we, you know, we got the horrors that, that maybe we'd lost it, so we needed to start, you know what I mean? But... It actually but really didn't start for ages. Who, who eventually, who, who eventually sort of calls a meeting and says, look, this, this isn't going quite right, or does everyone it, just think about it for it, ages and it, ages? It doesn't happen like just that. Just it Yeah, it keeps on fermenting and you keep on, you know, you go, we used to have these, um, these meetings every day to discuss the plan That's of the right, day. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, like, an editorial. Editorial. like in an office, yeah, yeah. An editorial. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we going to do today? Exactly. And we'd never do what we did, to, <laughs> what we were supposed to no, do. No, that's right. We'd start a bit. It was always, a, it always felt good. And then yeah. we'd go off and do yeah. Great. something else. <laughs> Absolutely. Or we'll never get anywhere at all and just bugger off home. Ooh. You started in Paris. You can get away with that. Yeah. We do all the time. Um, <laughs> you start, started in Paris. You should hear our Oasis interview from a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, you start in Paris. Then why, why do you move? Is that sort of um, is it a psychological thing? If we move studios, change of you know change of place, change of luck, we'll go off somewhere else. Uh, Paris was uh, we well we only booked in two weeks because we knew that um, by that point we'd probably yeah. had the heebies, um, and it was really an initially it was quite a, a weird session because. Um, we had we we were recording everything we were doing like the whole time, right back there again. Yeah, we had this poor guy Gerard, right? <laughs> who's who's uh, uh, what, what do we call him? Assistant it's, engineer, it's, assistant engineer, librarian. Um, and uh, we've got about you know five hundred dats of us making just you know dribble really, um, and it goes on and on and on and on and 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 occasionally you know you you, you get something that would just be blindingly obviously good and. And the rest of the time it was like that, but I really wanted to have that because um, the way we'd always worked before was like we'd always sit up in a room and we'd bash through something um, and it was ready to go from a live context of us being in the room. And I wanted to sort of say to everybody, look, um, along the way we might miss something. Right. <laughs> right. <But> unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find it. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't be asked to find it, so that was that. We're going to play some of the choices which you've brought in as well tonight, and we're going to start with Avrakar, which is the choice of Ed. Yeah. Tell us about this track. Um, I actually heard this on the Breeze Block about two years ago, I think, and it's just a um, stunning piece of music. I mean, um, I always kind of hoped that we'd be able to... I, I hoped that we'd be able to do something like this within the scope of Radiohead, but feared for a long time that, you know, to go out like that, is would be too much but i think we've actually done it on the record i mean it's quite interesting listening to tree fingers because there's definitely i mean the the these themes three which is the track is very ambient and um tree fingers has its ambient moment <laughs> it's ambient it's, yeah it certainly does it's radiohead live on radio one and various other cool radio stations around the globe tonight and this is Abra really Car. i didn't know that really? we're on mate I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. On the line. And relax. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Le Mac Live, the choice of Ed from Radiohead. We're talking about the new LP and playing some of Radiohead's favourite tracks uh, tonight. So, say, so we get to the end where it is, we, you know, it started to work, and then by uh, after a while, you have this point where uh, you actually have like as enough material for two albums. Sort right? of, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of music in the background. That? Right? that was zero seven doing a remix of uh, Oh yeah, climb at the walls, wasn't it? <sighs> Someone's doing yeah. this like you're yeah. for the chop. 
basil. <laughs> um, <laughs> the wine's gone everywhere. Yep. Uh, 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 that was, was your question? That? Yeah, you had enough material for um, oh, two okay. albums, this is what yeah. people are saying, is that right? Yeah, but then if you think about it, um, it, it was essentially uh, a, a three, almost three year period away. Um, and, and that is, uh, there's, there's, um, it means you have a build up of stuff, you know. Um, does, this, does this present you with a dilemma? Because if you've got so much material, the first thing is, we attempted to do a double album. Oh yeah, yeah, we went through all that, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We couldn't, um, th there was, no, we just said no, no way. I, and also, um, th the really, uh, weird bit about it is that they, they really, really go off in two different directions, or three actually. Um, which I think was, the, um, you know, like, every time we worked before we had a, a kind of like a mandate when we started and we didn't have it with this. So, um, when it came to putting Kid A together, it pretty much, we tried to approach it like writing a song and we tried to let it do it itself, which it sort of did really. Right. And now we're in the process of picking up the pieces that were left and seeing whether they'll write themselves. Um, and they kind of need a little bit of kicking, actually. Right, so there's other bits and there's stuff which is done. Mm. And there's... Other things, stuff. Things there. Yeah, I don't know. I can't, it's impossible to judge it, to be honest. So how, how were you picking the tracks for this record if there was quite a lot of material, even if some of it wasn't fully formed? Because the, the fact is, when you listen to it through, it actually, for a selection of tracks which have been picked from various places and from various timescales, it actually flows brilliantly as a record. Yeah, but uh, uh, as I say, it was really a question of, um, uh, we really wanted everything in its right place to be the first track, and it really did itself. Uh, I know it sounds silly, but it did. Well, everything picked itself. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Basically, you we, we all kind of had. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. It was very straightforward in a, in in a way. Once we decided to do the one record and do eleven or whatever ten tracks. You don't know, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> So it, was, it wasn't the one, wasn't the painful part because usually that's the painful part of the whole record. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there was pain. Yeah, there oh, was, it pain. was it pain. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But there always is at that part. Listen, uh, listen. At home, uh, I can tell you that Tom and Ed are just laughing at each other. <laughs> <laughs> that knowing laugh of we fought, we so fought at times. <laughs> yeah, Tom, yeah, you're it was quite hard. <laughs> It was, um, uh, I had this thing about it actually at the time, uh, which, which in retrospect was pretty daft. Where I kept talking about how it was like, you know, having a bunch of kids and, uh, saying, sending some of them off to the war and some of them not sort of thing. And it's, I, I thought I was, I thought I sounded really daft and, um, it, probably to everybody else it did sound really precious or whatever. But then, um, it's interesting because Bjork says the same thing about her stuff actually. Really? She's, yeah, she's really like, oh, all my songs, I have to fight for my songs, you know, which I think is really cool. Um, and that's basically what, what personally my freak out was about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, track two then, it all falls into place in the end. Track two is an incredibly eerie track. Kid A. You think it's eerie? Yeah. I do, actually. I th I'm not sure whether it's just the... There are certain words and phrases which you pick out of a song, but heads uh, yeah. on sticks... Yeah, 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 yeah. Quite eerie. Out of a hat, that in was. In the context. Was it? Mm. Just plucked out of a hat. No, yeah, I got one of them hats, you know, top hats. Oh, really? Pulling it out of the top... I, I had, um, uh, the other thing that I went mentioned... I, I mean, I had a, essentially a writer's block for two years, and all the stuff that, that, that um, uh, was in the writer's block that I didn't actually throw away in, in it instantly was, was, was put into this top hat and um whenever we were jamming or doing stuff in the studio i didn't know what to sing i would pull stuff out of the hat really yeah that, and that's and it was cool yeah i used to get some great stuff and it's just it's just bits of lines and yeah. it just comes out yeah wow it's interesting why working well listen we'll play this track from the new lp kid a from radiohead and this is the title track kid a one radiohead in paris well it does eerie for me it's Kid A, it's the title track from the new Radiohead album, it's Lamac Live on Radio 1, and uh, Phil's joined us while uh, Tom's gone away oh, for yeah. a second, and how much have you changed as a unit, do you think, over the years, and particularly maybe during the making of this record, because it's a different type of Radiohead album this, isn't it, with less guitars. Have your roles, your perceived roles, all changed a little? Yeah, I mean, I think that was one of the hard things for, um, 
when we were when we when we started up again because it obviously you know there's no space for let alone one guitar on some tracks mm. and sometimes no drums and sometimes no bass or whatever so that was kind of tricky to get one's head around at first and um but i think it kind of i think i think when everything in its right place came along and that was the first recognizably good thing that we'd we 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 done we, we, it was just evident that okay you know it's it's again kind of going back to what we used to do before it's the song that's most important and you know y you you i think what we acted a lot on this album there was there's a part of a you know there's a production thing a production team or a kind of a filter process and i think what's exciting is now that I think now it's once once we establish that it's incredibly liberating mm. because it just means you aren't confined to that one role or whatever that you've you've but done before. But before that, did you find all your insecurities bouncing off each other? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Colin, you're smiling. Yeah, everyone else is though too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are. Yeah, yes. Everyone else is smiling. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I think I think that's very true. I think that was one of the scary but the ultimately liberating experiences of doing this record was that. You know, to, to to sort of not feel that you're shackled to some role of of, of of contribution within Radiohead, and and you know, not sacrificing your own individual thing, but also, you know, just it's like passing the baton on, really. And it happens a lot, a lot more, and then just continue to do so. You know, mm. it's really exciting. You know, being able. You know, what really excites me about us is the fact that we've got five people who are capable of generating interesting sounding material at a time when so much music is coming out of people's bedrooms. So, you know, the fact that we can do that as five individuals and then, like, respond to it within that team group thing, and plus using technology to cut things up in that bedroom style, I think that's really exciting. And out of the five people, who wins the arguments? Is it Tom? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Has it always been Tom? Yeah, because he writes, you know, he writes the, the bulk of the songs and everything. Yeah. But going back further than that, was it always Tom at school? <laughs> and stuff. Um, but then you do the music for different reasons then. It's yeah. just to escape from the tedium of school and a retreat from like all the nonsense bullshit with games and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, it's a social function and desperately needed at that time. Yeah, I guess. So the gang changes naturally anyway a bit. Yeah. But Ed, you're always very protective of Tom, in quotes and stuff. Yeah. Do you, I mean, have you noticed him change? Is there anything you couldn't say to him? Anything that I can't say to yeah. him? No, not at all now. Would I mean, not not at all. I mean, I completely. You know, it's a very. Uh, sometimes it's it's. Um, I find it quite strange because you suddenly. You know, Tom has always had this ability to pick up an acoustic car, guitar, car, an acoustic car, <laughs> an acoustic guitar, and play a song. And he's got that ability to make you. You know, if he really wants to pull out all the plugs, he'll bloody make you weep. You know. Yeah. And that's an incredibly powerful thing. You know. I mean, th th so. Yeah, I mean, of course, we're. I'm, I'm protective. We're protective of one another, I think, and mm -hmm. and um, and I think the the important thing. I mean, the thing about Radiohead now that I think is to see everyone being able to do kind of what they want to do, and and this record has really meant that we can do that. And is there is there a mediator in the band if things go wrong? I think we passed the baton on that one, actually. Really, <laughs> yeah. that's the great thing about having five people. Really, yeah. something, something you see, you can always. Phil, I had it done as you or Ed. You pick it up at different yeah, times, do, people yeah. at different times, because, you know, we're just, we're, you know, regular guys. We have our mm. good days and our bad days, and if we're all having bad days and one other person having a good day, then, you know, it's, it's, it works like that. It's the, the virtue of, of, I think one thing we have learned is the virtue of patience, mm. you know. We, everybody's got, uh, everybody has their ups I think one of the great things about last year, we actually managed to get beyond being a, a, a school band. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, I think we were essentially still that, the same band as we were when we started. Yeah. Yeah, Do you think back so? in 1986, in what at way? the end. I don't know, in, in terms of, I think the, the relationship that was set up between us, yeah. I, mean, I think yeah. there were a lot of things that had gone unaddressed for so many years, mm. because, you know, you don't want to rock the boat when you're touring or whatever, or you, you don't yeah. have the, uh, uh, the communication skills of each other or whatever, but I think last year, yeah. I think we, you know, really, yeah, and I mean, got a lot of that out into the open. For me, like, that's really true, one of the important, one of the, the, the best things, one thing I'm happiest about is we've been working together for like 14, 15 years and five blokes <laughs> working together, um, my brother as well. <laughs> yeah, there he is, yeah, waving like, yeah. And um, the fact that, you know, you, you see what 
you everyone gets on each other's tits and then after that period of time you see why you get on other people's tits and you can laugh about it and see yeah. what a plonker you are and stuff and that's like a very rare sort of thing for a group of people working together to get to that sort of level really well there's also there's also a strange thing that bands sort of or just gangs of you know youngsters when you're in your teens uh, you bond with other people yeah. through your like of the same music yeah but then 15 years down the line your musical tastes go off in different directions which brings us to this which is Phil's choice. <laughs> which is... Which is Louis Armstrong. Running contrary to everything else this evening. <laughs> no, but why? Because uh, you are the oldest. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All around when yeah. it was recorded. <laughs> you um, have matured faster than the rest no, of us. No, this is, this is um, a, a bit of a history lesson in drums, really, so... Appreciate it might be a bit of a niche audience for it, but... Um, <laughs> 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 but it, it's Don't actually... Don't stand up for it. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> But it's um, going back to uh, uh, the 1920s in this recording. It's going back to the time when kit playing actually really started, and the, the pioneers of it were one of it. Uh, one of them uh, was called Baby Dodds, and the other one who is drumming on this track called uh, Zuti Singleton, uh, and they both played for Louis Armstrong. And so, this is a Louis Armstrong track called uh, "The Rhythm Man." It's live on Radio One. It's Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong on can, Radio 1. Can you clear me up for there you uh, go. Clear this one up for me? Is that actually recorded in 1929? So is that the, the oldest recording you've ever played on the evening session? I think it is. I think, yeah. it, I think it genuinely is, <laughs> yeah. I'm a big spider back, uh, big spider back man myself, really. Uh, you join us here, if you're uh, just tuning in, it's Steve Lamack and Lamack Live on Radio 1 and other radio stations around the world. Uh, tonight with Radiohead unveiling uh, the album Kid A. And uh, we now have Johnny in the room with us. And we've got Colin, Johnny and Phil from Radio Radio head. So, we're going to do some uh, emails uh, in uh, just a second as well. If you do want to email in, it's steve.lamac at bbc.co.uk. And, uh, oh yeah, there's one or two piling up, which we'll do in just a second. Uh, but we're in Paris because uh, that's where the current Radiohead tour obviously is. It's tomorrow and Wednesday, mm -hmm. the dates here. Um, but uh, after your video documentary, Meeting People is Easy, we have these hellish visions of when you go on tour. Is it, is it any different now? I mean, was that, was that in, a, in retrospect, was that a very bleak perception of how it really is? I think Grant was just showing what surprised him about being, being on tour with the band, the, the parts he didn't expect to see. Um, and that's, that's kind of what he made a film about. Uh, that, that it's, it's not really, it's not just us, in a way. What do you think, Colin? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was Grant's film, and, and also, like, a week later, we were go-karting around Perth and stuff, so, I mean, in so the sunshine and going to the beach and stuff in New Zealand, so... It wasn't all doom and gloom. No, but it was winter in Japan for two weeks, so that was quite an intense experience. Okay. This is um, an email, I'm just going to throw this in here very quickly, from Kieran Devani, I think that's how you pronounce it, who says, Question, should we take a single word of any of you, <laughs> any of you say <laughs> in any interview, including this one, at all seriously? Well, having heard my foot so plainly in my mouth from that recording of, of me talking two, two years ago, I'm kind of, I'm loath to say anything. So he's, he's got a point. Right, okay. And uh, this one is from Jay Manchester. There are a lot of uh, internet rumours about the fifth album containing tracks like Knives Out. Is that, do we know a track listing for the second album yet? Um, we, for, the, for the next possible album, we've got to we've got to filter them and put them in an order and 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 stuff like that. So it's 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 really an unformed thing so far. Okay, so going back to the touring, which obviously you're doing various dates and there are more UK dates to come. Mm. Have you tried, uh, given the, you know the problems in the past, have you tried to make it better, or have you tried to do it in a different way, or have you tried thinking, oh, you know, we can't go do it like this. We we can must there must be a way of getting around uh, some of the worst bits of it. Well, I think when we, we started the, trying to tour again, we we had to sort of challenge my, um, other, other uh, touring people, personnel's like uh, uh, assumptions as, as much as our assumptions have been challenged in the studio. And you know, I mean, it was an act of madness to take a big blue tent out and you know and do all of this. And and you know, it, it was very difficult persuading people, including ourselves, all along the line. But thank God it's worked out. You know, so. That's been really exciting though as well, hasn't it? Actually setting yourself up these, you know, fairly ambitious plans and, and then seeing them come together. Mm. Well, well, yeah, and the changeability of it is being able to see Johnny, like, 
just jump off the stage and leap across the security barrier and the sound check and run across and talk to Andy who, who does our amazing lights and about this new thing to try something out that evening and the sort of sort of the impromptu and spontaneity of it that we got so <laughs> sick of that was also lost when we did mm -hmm. the last tour. Yeah. And what about when you were actually recording Kid A or writing and recording Kid A? Did you have in your mind or did you later on have to work out how you were going to do some of those songs? We're going to play the national anthem in a second and that's one of the tracks which you do play live. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the inter you know that's one of the interesting ones. Every everything in its right place and the national anthem. Probably fair to say actually when we were recording. I, I I don't think we even knew if we were going to go out and play live again at really, any point. Yeah, I so, mean... So, um, yes, I mean, when, when we actually came to sit down and, and think, yes, we want to go out and play dates, but, it, you know, we, d we did have to adapt yeah. what's on the record. Um, but I think the versions that we're, which we're, we're playing live now are equally as valid, and it, it's actually great. I mean, with OK Computer and the Benz, I mean, what you heard when you came to see us live, I think we're more or less, more or less like Xerox copies. Mm. of what was on the record um, and it's actually exciting to actually have that that kind of flexibility in what you're playing now yeah. um, and, it, and it, it, it evolves as well and also some of the jobs that you do because you're doing a lot of live sampling um, yeah or, well, or on that you? song I'm, I'm just yes you are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. go on tell us well I'm, I'm kind of relying on, on, on local radio where we are playing you know, not playing Brian Adams and stuff. I'm just tuning a radio in to, to whatever's on local stations and hoping it's going to be bits of classical music or bits of people talking or, you know... I mean, there's always danger that you're going to tune to some, you know, extremist right-wing sort of... You've no idea what's going to come out yeah. in the local language, you know. It might be someone in Dutch kind of espousing some terrible... Um, so, so yeah, that, that's, that's kind of what I'm doing, really, just stealing other people's stuff. You're, you're all right in the UK. You just get John Peel. Yeah, it'll be, be on when you're headlining. Perfect. I'd imagine that would be okay. Yeah, I'll look, look for wouldn't it. it? But also the, some of the things which you do in, in the rest of the set. I mean, is this you know become quite a challenge now? Because as much as the studio material has moved on, everything else that you can do or achieve. Yeah, it's good. I'm kind of it's 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 sort of you know singing by proxy because I because I can't. I'm sort of stealing bits of Tom's singing and playing them back. You know, out of time. And out of tune even as well. Just just how I would. <laughs> and um and and that's that's really good. Obviously, it's again all a bit up in the air every time we play it, but but that's that's you know. It looks it, it looks tremendously clever from having seen the gig in Barcelona. Oh no, it's just a couple of buttons and, and, <laughs> Is it? and when well you know and and finger. and and, and um, I think it goes. Sometimes it goes very wrong. Sometimes I get overexcited and and wipe what 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 the computer's holding, so there's nothing in there anymore, and have to kind of push Tom back towards the microphone. So I've got something so still play, to use. Play around with. Them, so that's what. It's all right. Like. Well, as I say, this is one of the tracks which um, uh, gets uh, an airing in the live set and does have a fantastic punk rock bass guitar yeah but that, <laughs> yeah that wasn't me i didn't do that tom did that i was i, I went i went home on an early night and uh, that's not what well, that's not you on the record uh, no, no 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 i'm sort of trying to cobble it together live yeah. oh, it has a fantastic punk rock bass guitar uh, by the singer <laughs> and it also has a big jazz climax Possibly influenced by Louis Armstrong, who knows. Uh, this is Radiohead live on Radio 1, and this is then taken from the album Kid A. Uh, this is a track called The National Anthem. Serge Gainsborough, uh, Gainsborough, which is the choice tonight of Johnny from Radiohead, who's with us. Why that one particularly? Oh, it's just really seedy and, and dirty, and so so little music is, so little good music is this, really. And where, where did you hear it first, or oh. how did you... I don't know. Every time we come to France, um, um, people suggest French music, and we, we've been sort of collecting bits and pieces. And that's that's a record that's just really one of the best recordings of music I have. It's a wonderful whole record. I recommend it. And it's quite yeah, it's got that jazzy, funky, uh, sleazy feel. Uh, Tom and Ed are back with us. Uh, except Tom's eating something. Oh, well, what have you got? I'm, I'm, just carry on. Yeah. That'd be all right. <laughs> Um, we, we, just before the uh, trial, we played the national anthem, which um, track two and three. Uh, when I first heard them, uh, they were the ones who made that made me actually think of uh, the book 1984. Oh, really? So, yeah. I don't cool. know. What, I don't know whether there's. Um, it's not, obviously it's not the Big Brother that's in fashion at the moment, but it, there's a certain <laughs> there's a certain <laughs> big, big Brother feeling about certainly the national anthem, which I think was backed up slightly by the photo shoot which you did uh, recently for a certain magazine. Had yeah. the same feel about it. Do you see what I mean? Oh, well, um, I, yeah, I mean, uh, there was one night where, um, uh, we were on tour in America and, um, um, um you remember that time R.E.M. asked us out? Mm -hmm. And we went out to that club? I don't know about you. Which I was, town? Oh, God knows. 
subtle piece of name dropping. Yeah. I just, I just thought I'd <laughs> mention it. And I was sitting around the table with um with Michael and uh, uh, I don't know who else, and I suddenly started going to this rant about 1984, and how, how I actually thought um essentially all the things in 1984 had come true. It's just they had the wrong names and they were put in the wrong order. But essentially, we were actually living in 1984 already, mm. and I just and then I just went on and on and on about it, and it became a really unhealthy obsession. And that must have been in 1980, 1997 or whatever. Um, really? And that's about when that song started. Remember, we did that in there mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm. So suddenly, <coughs> there might be something in that. But then, I think that's very good. Yeah. The, n the next track, which um, which we're not going to play tonight, but we, we, you will be able to hear tomorrow on Radio One, is "How to Disappear Completely." Now, this is one of the tracks, one of I think two songs on this album, which do actually appear to be linked to a definite time and place. And mm -hmm. this one is Dublin. Yeah. Well, there's the Liffey. Yeah. There's the Liffey mm -hmm. in Dublin. But mm -hmm. is is it written about a certain gig or a certain time? Yeah, it was. What was that gig we did? The RDS. Mm. The biggest gig we'd done, it was the week before we did, it was in 97, the week before we did Glastonbury, wasn't right. it? Yep. And it was like the seventh gig of, you yeah. know, OK Computer, and the first gig of OK Computer, we were in front of 400 people in Lisbon. Right. We couldn't even sell out the tickets in this little club. <laughs> Two weeks later, we're in, we're in Ireland in front of 38,000 mad Irish fans, and it was, well, you, I mean, I always, I mean, I, I'm sure it must really annoy you, but... You're like the you know the Pied Piper of Dublin. Whenever you're in, you suddenly you know you see you can tell where you are in Dublin because there's all these you know all these people following you. It's like oh, Tom must be around the corner because there's this like queue of people. Maybe does that really happen? It did, yeah. yeah people just I'm not sure. You I'm not sure, but I've got a beard now, so they probably won't recognise me. Uh, um, but that's where it comes from. But it, it feels like at, at that point you don't know exactly where or who or why or how it all happens. Well, it's it's very David Byrne. How did I get here? That's exactly... Well, there you go. You see, that our main um, obsession um, uh, in terms of, like, reference points was remaining light. Once in a lifetime, where did I get here? How has, did I get here? How did I get here? Mm. And, um... Uh, yeah. So How to Disappear was, um... How to Disappear completely was... was we, the, the chorus was really like a... Um, a, a mantra uh, to sort of get get out of things that um, get out of a situation that just felt uh, wrong. Um, it was kind of a way of putting the shutters down, so you could. Um, that, and that's what the song is for. It's for for someone who's in a situation where um, they can't get out of it. They've got nothing to. Say, they, they, they can't say anything to get out of it. Um, um, but but rather than involve themselves and, and screw themselves up, they uh, keep repeating, I'm not here, this isn't happening, I'm not here, this isn't happening, I'm not here, this isn't happening. All the time. Mm. That's what it's supposed to be about. And if you shut your eyes like that, people can't see you either. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is radio, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> there's that, and then there's um, the uh, ambient-esque track, which is Tree Fingers, which we're going to play on uh, tomorrow night's evening session. And then we come to a track which we never thought we'd see written down on paper, which is a Radiohead track called Optimistic. Poptimistic. Poptimistic, <laughs> this one. And for everyone who thinks that there are no guitars on this record, here's some guitars on this record, <laughs> which is in Optimistic. It is right, yeah. Mm. Did, how did this work out then, in the centre of the plan? Oh, I thought it was going to come on then. I thought it was a really good link. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, um... You've got to say something about oh, it first. Okay, right, you uh, have to earn your, you earn your wedge okay, before you actually play your records on air, I think. Yes. Right? That's, that, that's your fish head. Again, it was one of those songs that we... I mean, I think the version that made it onto tape was by... Um, was in October. We recorded it. But oh, my birthday. Yeah, your birthday, that's right. And... But we'd, so that's ten months into the year, so we've been, that was one of the first songs that we played in France, kind of like day one, day two. So you can imagine how many versions of Optimistic there are. <laughs> Probably hundreds. Yeah. Absolutely hundreds. Yeah, there are, there are. Um, but this is the one which uh, made it, and when we come back, two brilliant email questions after this. But it's Radiohead from the album Kid A, and this is Optimistic. Slash Radio 1. Steve and with a very funky radio head in the studio. Uh, Only Tom, for 10 seconds, I'm afraid. We've got uh, Barefoot over there, shoes off. Yeah. He's got his shoes off. Tom's got bare feet. Like doing the show with Joe Whitey. Really is. It's optimistic. It's taken from the album, which is called Kid A, out in uh, the first week of October. 
I was going through some um, old bits of archive, which some of which you may have heard earlier on. And uh, do you know there's one word where, uh, which always comes up uh, when you're talking about the recording experience and stuff, and pretty much anything actually, it's also uh, highlighted in meet meeting people is easy. And that word is intense, terrifying. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> we need a new word. Thing There's lots do. of words that do the same thing, but... It's mm. everywhere, yeah. the word terrifying. Okay, sorry. Here's uh, a couple of emails which you must do. This is from Paul Allen from St Albans, who's uh, in brackets an aspiring songwriter. If someone was to buy one of your records, just one of your records, for the first time, which one would you nominate? Would it be this one? The new one, or where would you go for a start? Depends who, uh, when, when, it depends what you mean by being a songwriter. <laughs> right. You know, uh, um... Uh, Songwriting. Mm, songwriting. Probably not this one. Okay. Uh, this is from Andy in Birmingham. After reading interviews with Radiohead take, uh, talking about making Kid A, where Tom talked about smashing his tape of the album, and given that they all seem to dislike the kind of touring they're forced into, I was just wondering, says Andy, which part of being in a band do you actually enjoy? <laughs> we're, actually, we're actually digging the touring, actually, and we're actually sort of dig making the record and it being finished and it sounding good. I think, um, uh, this is all in the context of last time it happened, and, uh, it going on too long. But now it's a new you, in a different way. Yes, yeah, new you, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, what, yeah. What, what happens when you do get, um, frustrated with stuff? Do you break things? We, was, we were talking about that, this, you know, this story of, like, you're breaking a cassette. Do you break stuff? Boys uh, generally do. Um, uh, no, you see, now, we're, we're the... No, see, uh, we, we tend to sort of, like, say nothing. Don't we, really, unfortunately. But that's always more frightening. When, yeah. when an authority figure who you, you actually have respect for when you're growing up mm. and, and they just go quiet and stop talking and they're obviously really furious, that's always more alarming in a way. It's so you talking more about? Oh, I don't know, you know, people do it. <laughs> no. I can imagine, I can, Im <laughs> I can imagine there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things that go unsaid at certain times. Um, yeah, and it builds up anyway. Uh, but we, uh, we haven't seen a therapist yet, so I guess it's okay. Yeah. I don't know, you know, whatever. I think so. I and think, yeah. Let's face it, yeah, optimistic, uh, of, the, of this record, <clears throat> which seems to be drawing just words. This sounds like one of the ones you might have got out of, uh, yeah. a hat. Uh, was that how it happened? Sort of, yeah. It was, uh, mm, endless struggling. I mean, it was very much written during the, the block. <laughs> It was about the only thing that made it through the block. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and it was really, um, um, I sort of had a problem with, uh, um, c c coming, coming from the context of, of, of basically, um, being in a band, um, and writing about personal experience, um, and one's own problems, I suddenly sort of, I'd had enough of it, and, um, and the, the, I, I was reading a lot of sort of political stuff and thinking, um, I don't understand why it is that these things are allowed to happen in our name and we just sort of just let it happen. Mm. Um, uh, and, and I really had a problem with, with the fact that everybody was just resigned to that being the case, that, that somehow since the Berlin Wall fell uh, capitalism in all its glorious forms is is the only solution to all our problems and uh screw everybody else frankly and uh and th that we're all just happy consumers and we we really want that reno and we really want that uh mobile phone that you can program a melody on and ultimately will make us happy hmm. um and this is a, this is something else which you pick up in the track which we're about to play in a second which we'll get to but we have to get to before we get to idiotech which i think continues part of the theme there's in limbo which this was another early song wasn't it because this was called lost at sea mm -hmm. at one point but it's called in limbo which i noticed as well is was a phrase which cropped up in your uh, in Ed, your, um... Ah, yes, the diary. Diary. Yes. Isn't, isn't there actually something in there which says, um, talking about the recording process, there was very little played, but a lot of talk, the problem is we're essentially in limbo. Right. Uh, <laughs> bam, bam. Here's a song. Cool. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, I mean, from my point of view, it was much more about, um, uh, uh, my, my partner, she is doing a PhD in, um, Dante's Inferno, you know Dante's Inferno, 
and and uh, we have this tape in our car, which is basically Dante's Inferno. <laughs> Which is a good cheery drive. I was going to say, yeah. it's not Bruce Springsteen, no, is it? it <laughs> um, but uh, I, I just got really um, into all the um, aspects of limbo, the, the levels of hell, and because um, that's it's quite um, formative to the way that we all think about heaven and hell and so on. Um, uh, and the song was kicking around at the time, and it sounded it, once we'd started recording it, it sounded to me. Like some of the voice stuff on it really just sounds like the voices from Limbo, the voices that can't get out. Mm. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's in that's in Limbo, and then we come to. Let me just make the, let's, let's get this out of the way. There's no singles off this album. No. There's no singles coming no, off this album. Of course not. Okay. Did you ever think about the single? No, that was that was you know I, I think by that stage when it, we'd made enough decisions right and, and we just didn't you know it doesn't you just doesn't, not want to well you know it just didn't doesn't seem right I mean I, I mean I, for a start we don't listen to the singles charts and when you do get a a, a feel for it it's kind of like it's week twelve and you turn on the radio and everyone goes this is the eleventh new number one it's week twelve of the new year this is eleventh number one of the year that's gone straight in at number one it's just we don't care yeah I mean I, that's right. We don't care. Yeah. We don't care no. anymore. Yeah. No, and it's completely us and yeah. everybody knows it. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is us. It's about budgets, it's about, you know, getting your thing straight in at number one and that's it. And and so why do I mean we we're actually afforded the luxury at this stage of like, well we don't it's not completely essential. We're not struggling for <clears> some <throat> kind of you know, for people to hear the record when it's released. Mm, four yeah. months from now when it bums really badly. Exactly. You'll we'll expect be to hear a single. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of them coming. Because you see the thing is, if there was a single off this LP, it'd be this track. We'll play it and we'll talk about it. But this is fantastic. This is called Idiotech. So if I was in A and R then <laughs> 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 What's so funny about that? <laughs> well, uh, uh, the words A and R. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. Fair enough. But if I was in A and R, that would that would have been my choice as a single, strangely. But only today, because I've changed my favourite track three times uh, over the course of the last two weeks, learning to live with this record. You're implying but, that an A and R man has an imagination. Um, I don't know. I must. There must be someone somewhere who does. Yeah. Stop raising your eyebrows up and down like that. It's, it's put me off. Um, I've got written down in my uh, in my notes here because it's got this sort of it's like industrial feel to it. But I've just got it's like standing in the high street, except the high street is a foreign land that makes no sense, but every sort of sense at the same time. P.S. It's a land where the lottery rules. What do you make <laughs> of this? Oh, sh you wrote it. Uh, okay. Well, um, right. This is my excuse for it. Right. Um, is that. Um, I wanted the, uh, to uh, on on the record to be at least one track that um, uh, you, you'd go out um, to a nightclub and um, you'd you'd dance until your head fell fell off and um, and the rest of the lyrics really what I wanted to do was do what I thought was the most up, um, uplifting. Um, out of a box piece of music that that we could possibly do. Um, out of it, a box. Yeah, you, you have been learning the lingo. That's right, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like whack. Yeah, it? out of the box. It's like yeah. whack. All right. Um, and um, uh, yeah, it's out of the box. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, um, the words. Um, and the, and the, but actually, the words were supposed to be basically all all the things that 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 actually keep me awake at night. You know, you say you can't sleep at the moment. Yeah. Right, well, these are the things. Uh, each line in this song, uh, uh, they're the lines that that kept me awake at night for about a month. Really? Yeah. So they're all, but um, but they're out of the hat, which is even more worrying. So these are lines. Out of the box, out the hat. Sorry. In your head. In your head. On, yeah. on Unfortunately, your it was in my head at some point. Um, uh, uh, but I think your analysis is, is probably better, really, because I'm really not probably the best judge. Oh, you what always you say that, don't you? You yeah. always say that eventually. <laughs> I can't get let you get away with that. That's rubbish, Ed. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> we can't let him get away with that because he's always part. saying that, isn't he? What passing the buck? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's one one more thing. Just yeah. before we're, we're going to play uh, Colin's Choice, which is uh, tracked by Roots Maneuver. But I just want to mention this this thing that you know there is stuff ready almost for the second record. Do we think that we got a release date on that? Got to push you. We haven't got a release date. Okay, we no. do, yeah, we don't That's know fine. whether it's going to be a full record or whether it's going to be EPs or what. Okay, but 
every time, or the last few times we've had a Radiohead album, there's always been a sense that it's going to be the last, ra it could be the last Radiohead yeah. LP ever. But it isn't this time. No, that's, because that's the, that's, that's the big thing point. That's yeah, the I mean, what we're trying to do is just break up that whole thing is, went to see, uh, we're in Paris, went to see a Beck plays concert in Paris about three months ago in June, and he was saying that the more he has success as an artist, the further he becomes removed from his artistic means of production, like being in the studio and writing songs, and he spends 18 months, two and a half years touring around the world, you know, on it. So it's like, the, the more, you know, re recognition you have, the sort of further away it gets removed from what you started in the first place. Yeah. Which is why, which is why there was so much stress. Um, it wasn't even in, in that, making the record, it was about us um, getting together, building a studio, making a space that we could work in and carry on and deal with all this stuff um, as peripheral, you know, we, but, but basically, you know, the happiest we are is when, uh, is when something's done. Like, you know, when we finished Idiotech, everybody was like, where did that come from? You know, but how you that thank sort goodness. of thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, um, but the, the prospect of um, 12 months down the line, still having that next to a, an advert for engineered Levi's or whatever, yeah. you know, on your TV is just, just, I'm sorry. Third okay. single. Yeah. 48th B-side. Yeah. 98th tour mm. and and then and then someone else rips it off and uh uses it as an ad for a, a car and then you think right we have to find a new approach screw these people and so this is where we're headed yep okay colin we're going to play a choice by you and then we've got more uh from the rosie head lp to come but we've got to fit this in because you really want to play it and it's by roots maneuver and what is it uh, I think it's called Movements, um, but I only heard it two nights ago, so I don't have a clue about anything to do with it. So Ed knows the record really well, so... Do you? Yeah, well, you remember my birthday night when we got completely... Yeah, moved. I remember. That was the record. You wouldn't Eagles. remember. That was the record that was playing. <laughs> really? No one was remembers the it. It's a, I, 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 I played that to you. I it's remember like, you disco dancing down the garden and chucking please. up. Every... <laughs> yeah, it's keep okay, revisiting sorry, that. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was out of the box. <laughs> it's uh, Roots Maneuver, it's Radio 1 with Radiohead tonight. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's taken from the new Radiohead album, which is called Kid A. We are in Paris tonight uh, with Radiohead, where they continue their current tour uh, for a couple of days tomorrow and Wednesday. In this huge room in Radio France, so if it sounds like it's all booming around the sound, uh, that's, that's why. <laughs> and so good acoustics. Do a record in here. Mm. Uh, we ha we're joined for the final uh, part of uh, this part of the program by uh, all the members of the bands. And the thing is, that track which comes at the end, which is called Motion Picture Soundtrack, after everything you've been through through the album, and uh, you get the impression that I've got this sussed. It's um, <laughs> it's 1984. No, it's something else. No, it's the no. There's an album. It's over here. No, we're going up. All of a sudden, everything, all your preconceptions go down the drain, and it suddenly becomes the whole album. Suddenly, on reflection, feels like a collection of contemporary film soundtracks, ending with the Wizard of Oz. It's definitely the Wizard of. Um, well, if we if we were going to make a video for it, which of course we're not going to. But if we were, um, our dream was to actually have, you know, the Bluebirds. I don't know what Disney, um, Disney film that's yeah. from. You know, the Bluebirds on my shoulder. Oh, that kind of zippity Louis Armstrong, what a strong, word, wonderful world. When he's just beginning of Disney, and he's got the Bluebirds um, and dance. Yeah, that's down film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back, just for a second. <laughs> he's jumping at the bed. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't be getting any ideas. Now, I, I had this yellow brick road thing in okay. my mind, so, yeah. almost at the end of that. But do, you, do you see what I mean? You could take various tracks, and um, although there won't be any videos, obviously, for this record, but, but some of them are actually quite filmic in their design and their sound. Do you see what I mean? Uh, maybe. Uh, I have to say that that, that really... Um, uh, it hadn't crossed your mind, was, it? No, well, it wasn't the intention, by any means. I think... Um, uh, the reason that that's I mean that song's really really ancient. Is that's, it? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like mm, that's pre creep. That song. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, and John Leckie wanted always. He, yeah, John, when we were making the band, so he kept on going that crazy song. So we, we listen, lads. Can we get that crazy song again? Nah, you know whatever. Mm. And that's was about two, three years before that, wasn't yeah. it? So that was nice. It was. It was. It was. Um, it was before creep. How many songs have you got lying around in drawers? Uh, that's quite a lot. Um, yeah, we we always get you get people at gigs going play True Love Waits or play uh, what's it, Nude or what's it the other one Big Boots or Man of War. All these you know these these ones, and 
uh, lift. That's a classic one. <laughs> oh. um, well, yeah. Um, uh, well, you know, you have these songs, and you, you um, but from my point of view, anyway, you know, you write these songs, and um, the words like really, really mean something to you, and then uh, three months down the line, or three years down the line, uh, you no longer understand where it came from. Mm. So uh, you can't even begin to work out how to record it or how to how to create the atmosphere that's supposed to go with it. Mm, how to vocalise yeah. it. Yeah. And um, motion picture soundtrack was um, a classic sort of. Um, uh, I did it uh, because everyone was sort of saying, "Oh, you know, we should do this." And I was mucking around with it on this pump organ thing. And then that was that was the extent of my involvement, and had absolutely no emotional uh, contact with it at all, you know. And Cosy and Johnny and Nigel were really like into it, and they thought it was really great. And I was like, yeah, okay, well, I'm going home now. And I came back, you know, 24 hours later, and and Johnny had basically done all these harps and uh, uh, double basses on it, and it just sounded like, you know, I'd always wanted that song to be this big tragedy, but actually, it's it is supposed to be uh, a, a homage to Disney you know mm. it's basically sort of saying you know you've been sold a massive white lie um, and uh, there's something essentially missing from your life but um, it's essentially Disney's fault that's what it's saying but that must be quite, <laughs> quite nice to actually have to be in a position where even even now you have a shared idea even though you don't know it yeah that that's it Johnny yeah. comes in and does all the things you pick up an idea and turn it into something else. Yeah, I mean, ask, did you him, hit, you ask him where he came, where that came from. Yeah, where did I've the heart come no idea. from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it, it's just a mixture of. I mean, it's it, it's a bit like it, it's it, for me. It's a real adolescent dream at the moment because we just have a studio that just have instruments lying around, and that was always my kind of always what I wanted wanted to be able to do. And so you just you just access to so many sounds and colours and instruments, and it's you can you can try anything. And are you always in there? In the he's studio. in the he's in the the most on his own. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I don't know what he's trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> Musically speaking, I'm just shaking the. You know, yeah, exactly. No, no, don't go there. Um, <laughs> <Kibasa>. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's that's going on. You see, I mean, the, the strange thing is because obviously that's a great thing to have, isn't it? Finally, the studio is done. Took quite finally, a while, bloody, didn't it? Finally, yeah. The builders, you know, it took ages. Yeah, it was six way behind schedule. Well, were you talking about that earlier, were you? No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, somebody told me, I think. Yeah. But it's all done. But you do, I mean, I don't think, um, we've done interviews in the past, but I don't think I've done an interview with yourselves where everyone seems so sort of rejuvenated and not worried about stuff, mm. particularly. Is that right? We go around the table. Johnny? Yeah, I just, I'm just quite happy and proud at the moment of what we're doing, so it's, it's a nice feeling. Proud? Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's and a word. And enjoying it as well. It's like, you know, it's just... You know, uh, you know, traditionally uh, bands and and us are going to talk, you know, in this kind of style. But but you know, it's a great thing to be doing. It's actually quite a nice a nice thing to do. You know, playing a band and and travel around and of course it's brilliant. You know, and Phil, I'm Is really it? enjoying our tour at the moment. Actually, amazing, really. You know, it's as touring should be. It's, I think, you know, we we sat down for a while and actually talked about all the different elements of touring that we didn't like and how we we'd like to approach it from here on in. And for me, it's actually come together in this tour, so yeah, feel oh, very positive about it. Wish I had a video camera, I could sky off work for a couple of weeks, <laughs> make myself a few bob. <laughs> <laughs> Ed? I think it just feels, for the first time, that it feels that there is really a way we can carry on being like this. We've, mm. we've sorted out a lot of shit. There's Oops. a future. And, <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and it's just there it was. Yeah. And, um, and I think, you know, to come we're going to embrace that same shit you know that's yeah. and 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 it's quite nice it's it's not quite nice it's bloody amazing mm. colin i dare you to disagree colin now i, I wouldn't disagree with, no, <laughs> with it's, anyone but um yeah what, if this what, was a political panel program a lot more throat clearing wouldn't that yeah. really but uh no but i mean it's cool because it's like one one of the things i've really enjoyed is like looking at all the things you hate doing when we were finishing our okay computer with like touring and stuff and and videos and um and 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 saying what you didn't like what didn't work and stuff when you're so brought up to sort of follow it along 
Oh, pour me one as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, um, not, that's not Tom urinating in the yeah, corner, no. that's actually it's pouring the same out. Colour, toilet's just, far enough away of, for it to be, yeah. but, um... <laughs> <laughs> Did we really need to know that bag, detail? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying, Cos? Yeah, but I'm just saying that it's it's really good to like you know the, the sort of negative energy of like what you, what pisses you off is like really as important as as like feeling you have to do all the right things. Yeah. You know? And the Tom Meister, what, uh, do you, what do you say? Um, I, I'd say that um, here here. You know, I'd say that we we, we started again. Um, there's there's. Uh, I think people listening to this program probably think we're just a bunch of, um, <laughs> you know, jubilant fools. But actually, um, what we're trying to tell you is um, uh, that um, we we sort of had quite a lot of trouble sorting things out. But ultimately, the the, the way that we feel now is sort of um, um, that we're really lucky and we feel like we started again and we feel like that um, the reason that we do this uh, job that we do is because um, everybody benefits, nobody loses and um, all the negative energies you work through and you get through them and you work them into something positive and that's what we're about. And you combine that with a bit of demob fever <laughs> and, and, you, and you have Radiohead out of the studio with a new album, Kid A. It's out in shops in October. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Good luck with the rest of the tour. Cheers, too. And everything. And uh, we'll just see you hopefully at some of the UK dates. And we're going to play out with uh, this, this part of the programme, uh, which is, you, you're the only one who hasn't had a choice yet, Mr. Tom. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, Square Pusher for you. And um, yes, well, Square, Pusher, um, Square Pusher Apex Twin. This is a, a collaboration they did for um, uh, We're Reasonable People, which is the Warp Celebration album. Um, Warp Rock. This rocks, uh, all electric guitar music's dead, and this is the future. It's Apex Twin, Square Pusher. It's for Radio 01. I think we can.